Hey guys, my name's Andy Elliott. This is gonna be a video for sales managers and for leaders. So currently, at this time, 2020 of October, we're about there, I'm training 90,000 salespeople. We're almost at 100 grand on salespeople. That is amazing, think about it. 90,000 salespeople I train. And as I'm in 150 stores right now, doing live training in their companies, what I see is the number one determining factor as I train these salespeople is their managers and their leaders play a giant effect on the potential of that person. What I see salespeople have constantly are a lot of stories that they have that they're telling themselves, okay? And it goes back to me, to the leaders that are above because the leaders need to paint the vision. So I wanna give some motivation today and I want you to just do this during this video. And this is gonna be a short video. We're not gonna make it long. But I want to reach out there to anybody who's been a GM, a manager, you're in a leadership position, you want to be in leadership one day. What is important, okay? The leader will be the one that will decide whether he will have the best sales team in the country or not based on his actions. So I wanna give some bullet points. You should take notes and just think about this. Take your cup, dump it out, and be ready to fill it back up for a second. Identify where maybe where your weaknesses are. Number one, your goal is to be a world-class sales leader, not a normal sales manager, man. Look, your job isn't to have the title on your shirt that says, sales manager. I know a lot of you guys got the business cards that says you're a manager. Let me ask you a question. If I lined you up with the rest of the leaders across the world, the rest of the sales managers, where would you line up with no title? Your title doesn't call you a leader. The leader is a person that says, hey, let's go, not a boss that says go. And I see a lot of bosses, I see a lot of people in sales managers and dealerships that are leading from behind the desk doing admin work not out on the floor helping their team grow. And I want to share that with you. If that's you right now, you're never going to have the best sales team. What you need to do is get out on the floor with them and train with them. And one of the things I'm going to get to in a minute is when you aren't selling enough cars, you need to double down on your training. I mean it. Whether it's you doing the training, whether you have a training program going on, I see a lot of people when things get tight, they cut out training. I see a lot of dealers whenever, you know, maybe things get tough, they cut advertising instead of doubling down. Look, this year during the COVID, the people that went and bought more cars during COVID are the people that made three times as much money. And guess what? The people that doubled their advertising budgets and went after it and attacked, guess what happened? They're the ones that made all the money and carried through. The car business is at a point right now where it's really lying on the leaderships to make the next decision where the company's gonna go. Your sales team will be the determining factor whether you're successful and you kill it or whether you get beat and your competition crushes you. Hey guys, it's Andy. I hope you're enjoying the video. If you are, please like and subscribe below. Also, click on the link below. Join me in a free strategy session. I'd love to help you set up a game plan to crush it. Let's get back to the video. You know why? Because the salespeople inside of the dealership are everything. A, a store is only as good as their salespeople. So with that being said, it all relies on you. So I wanna give you some couple things to think about. What is your company mission, all right? I have five coaches that work for me. And as we've grown our company, and by the way, as being a GM, I took a store from 150 to making 400 to 500 a month on average we sold. From 150 to four to 500, that was three times the number. Our record was 600 booked after rollbacks. That was a store that after 40 years, they never sold over 300 cars and averaging four to 500 now for four to five years straight. How did it happen? It happened by me running the sales team as being a good leader. I created a lot of things like culture and atmosphere. Those are things that you have to create as a leader. A lot of leaders aren't creating enough energy energy in their staff. They're telling them what to do, but they're not creating the culture. The culture is the believability that, look guys, we're going to climb a bigger mountain together. We're going to do it. I got your back. You got my back. It's like SEAL Team 6 going in. Everybody's ready. We're all lined up. We all know what the vision is. We're all on the same page, and it takes time to build that page. And guess what happens? A lot of times people say, hey, I don't like to hire people that have been doing this for a long time, right? Because they got bad habits, okay? Guess what? 
everybody's got bad habits. And then I see people that are like, hey, we don't like to hire new guys or young millennials because they don't understand what they're doing. They don't want to work hard. No, they don't want to work hard for a certain person because that person had it motivated them or influenced them to want to think bigger. Look, management and great sales leaders, they decide how big the thinking in the store gets, okay? If a manager becomes complacent, don't be surprised when all the salespeople are complacent, okay? And a lot of managers, they like to blame it on salespeople, not, hey, this isn't you, that's fine, when they're not doing great. Listen, the way I was raised, I've been doing this for 23 years, is in the car business, when you pulled up to my store, my salespeople were a direct reflection of me. So when you pulled up, you're like, hey man, that's one of Andy's guys. Okay. There was never a guy that was like, Hey Andy, you know, what's up with that guy? And I'm like, Oh man, he sucks. No, we don't say that. He's your guy. You hired him. You take responsibility of him. We don't hire people and then just hope that they make it. We hire people and ensure that they make it. Make good hiring decisions, never hire bodies. But you know what I'll tell you? This is probably one of the biggest deals where there's no vision. People perish. You probably had some good people at once working for you. And then what happened? is maybe you didn't like something that they did so you ran them off and now you're trying to replace them again. You know what you need to do? The store that I broke the most record at in my life, I went in and the owner told me day one, he said, Andy, fire every one of those people. They're horrible and replace them. And you know what I did? I walked in there and I had a sales meeting and I talked about the culture and the vision and the atmosphere that I wanted. And most of them looked at me like, nah, man, that sounds great, but probably tomorrow that won't happen again because we've been promised a lot. Hey guys, we're going to start training next week. And then guess what? Two weeks later, there's no training. Hey guys, we're going to start having a good attitude. Everybody's going to be fired up constantly. We're going to jam out. We're going to have a sales meeting every day. Do you know how many leaders don't even have sales manager meetings anymore? Think about it. You have a meeting once a week and you know what it is? It's to complain about what's not right. You never tell people what they do right and then say, hey, we would like to grow in these areas. You have meetings and say, hey man, you guys aren't doing this right. You better do this right. If you don't do this right, you're not going to have a job. By the way, we're going to start docking your check if you don't do this. Man, I don't want to work for that guy. What kind of atmosphere is in that? What kind of culture is in that? If you took these people under your wing, lead as if you would want to be led that way. Think about it. I can re- remember the people in my life that influenced me and that took me under their wing. I can remember them. Okay. And you can probably remember the ones that did it to you. I want to ask you this. Are you doing it for your people? And are you doing it for every single one of them? That's a big question. So people are telling themselves stories, stories like this, like, Hey man, I'm not good enough. You know what I mean? Hey, I can only go so far and then I can't go past that. Are you influencing them and telling them, Hey, it's all about from today forward. We're not going to look in the rearview mirror anymore. Is that you? Are you doing that? If you're not doing that, guess what's going to happen? They're not going to become great. They can't become great because their leader doesn't have that big of thinking. This is a mountain. Okay. Once you climb it with your team and you get here, if you go to sleep on a win, you'll wake up with a loss. You tell your team, we're going to climb that mountain. We're going to take it. And then we're going to come back down. And then we're going to take a bigger mountain and we're going to keep taking bigger mountains every single month. You know why? Because you're capable of it. And I'm going to change the future of your family. I'm talking about generational wealth for my salespeople. And that's something that most people don't talk about. And I want to tell you this, the money in the car business is insane, but most managers will never get their people to making that kind of insane money. Do you want to be a manager that your guys, when they work for you, right? After you've retired a long ways from now, they're still telling stories about how amazing you were. And they're running their team now talking about, Hey, how amazing my manager was that I worked for, how incredible he was. And that's why I do what I do today because he led me so well. Are you going to be remembered? Okay. So as we talk about breaking records, pushing through barriers, look, if you don't have a culture and then when you have a bad day, you're not doubling down on training. So you don't have those bad days again. You know, what's going to happen. Your competition is going to clean your clock because they're going to be doing it. So with that being said, this is some motivation that I wanted to share with leaders and sales managers If you really want to become the best, if you want to kill it, I train almost a hundred thousand salespeople, which means every day we hear how they talk about their management. And by the way, 
I love managers. I'm partnered with stores all across the country. But as I continue to grow, one of the things that I see is I see managers that have a scarcity mindset that are afraid for their people to train with other people. You know what I'm saying? Afraid to get out there and maybe take time off work to go learn. You know, you're not really taking your people under your wing and you're growing them. You're just trying to work them harder. Well, guess what's going to happen? They're going to get burned out. They're not going to have a family life balance. And then you know what? They're never going to give you 500%. They're only going to give you 50% because you're not giving them more than 50%. And the reason why you're not is because you're not probably balancing out some of these things. You're not influencing your team. You're not creating a vision. So your great team's perishing. You're not coming off a mountain and trying to go to another one by motivating and encouraging them. And then as you go through this and you basically will finish on this, call your whole entire sales team and say, Hey, what does our company stand for? Go, 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 go. I guarantee you'll get a different answer from every single one of them. Make sure that they all know the company's vision so well that they could literally recite it. If you ask any of my coaches what we stand for, it's to create the most elite salespeople the world has ever seen. How they can close anybody, anytime, any place, anywhere, over the phone or in person, it doesn't matter. We want to teach them how to have bulletproof confidence, fearless confidence. We want to teach them to be like Alcatraz, where no one can escape. When I made 700 grand a year selling cars, how I did it is that I lived by those principles not a great leader. So as I say this to you, you be that great leader for your guys, and I hope this video helps you take your team to the next level. Hey guys, congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Obviously, you're the determined ones, and you guys crush it. You're the one percenters. I just wanna tell you, number one, I appreciate you, and anything you need, reach out to me. If you're struggling with anything, leave a comment in the comment section below. I always answer all my own comments. I'll reach out and help you. Also, don't forget to set up a strategy call with me. It's free, it takes 20 minutes. You can click the link below too and you can join me. I'd love to help you make a game plan to crush it. Hope you guys have a great day.